Hey everybody, I'm Dr. JJ Thomas. Welcome to the Clinical Corner. Today's Clinical Corner, we are going to give you tools and exercises that will help you finally relieve that unrelenting hip flexor pain and tightness that you get when you're sitting long periods or when you go to get out of sitting and you're just like, ah, oh, this hip flexor is so tight. Or if you're the person that when you pull your knee to your chest, you get that pinchy pain, oftentimes it's a hip impingement from the hip flexors being really tight. So I'm gonna give you two of my favorite stretches for the hip flexors. Um, one is more advanced than the other, so don't feel like you need to do both. Pick whichever one works best for you. And then I'm gonna give you two mobility exercises that will help you retain those gains. Because remember, if you don't use these muscles in their end range, then your brain has no reason to retain that end range. So the mobility exercises are as important, if not more important than doing the stretches. All right, so go ahead and uh, follow along. As always, I'm open for questions and comments, so you can just reach out to me on YouTube or in Instagram DM anytime you have questions. The first exercise, you're gonna need uh, a, just a towel, a dish towel or a sweatshirt or anything like that. This is probably one you've seen before, um, but I'm gonna help you pay really careful attention to the way you're doing it so that you can get um, more out of it. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring yourself to a half kneel position. If it's uncomfortable for you to kneel, by all means, you can kneel on a pillow, that's totally fine. And I'm gonna put this knee up because we're gonna stretch this hip flexor. So I want you to see uh, really some of the small details that are gonna make a difference when you're working on this stretch. So a half kneel position like this will work. You can have your foot down or up in terms of the toes, whatever's more comfortable for you. And essentially, what I want you to do is the very first step of this, have your towel in hand and ready to go. The very first step in this, you're going to tuck your tail as if you're a scared dog. So, you know, if you had a tail and you were scared, you would tuck it under like this. See how that stretches my hip flexor right here. Really important to do that component of it because part of the hip, one of the hip flexors attaches to the front of the pelvis. So if you don't stabilize here, you're really just gonna rock out your pelvis in this stretch and you're not gonna get the most out of it. So you're gonna start by tucking your tail like a scared dog. You'll feel the stretch almost immediately right there. And then from there, you're gonna take this towel, hold this stretch like this, and then keep this really active and tight while you bring your arms overhead, eyes are forward, pull the arms back. When you pull the arms back, don't let the ribs flare again. Keep, that, keep the ribs tucked down and the pelvis tucked as you bring the arms overhead and pull the arms back if you can. If you're ready for more in that stretch, what you can also do an added component is do the same steps. Find that position, tuck the tail, then pull this up, keep the tail tucked, eyes forward. Now, if you're maintaining that well and you're pulling your arms back, you can also side bend away and look up. And then you're just gonna breathe there. But the whole time I'm doing this, I'm keeping really actively, consciously, keeping the tail tucked there. All right, so that's the first flexibility or stretching exercise that I wanna give you. That's the, the, the simpler version. Um, it may be complicated in terms of it has many steps, but most people can do this stretch really well. If you're an athlete and you're looking for a more aggressive stretch, Another one you can do, like I said, it's a little bit um, trickier to get, but another one you can do is in side lying. What you'll do, follow along with me because it is a little, uh, like I said, tricky. You're gonna take your top knee, pull it up and grab it with your bottom arm. This is gonna stabilize that pelvis similarly to what we did in the half kneel position. Then you're gonna grab the bottom foot with your top hand and you're gonna pull your leg back as far as you can without letting the hip, without letting go of this. Because if you let go of this, you're just gonna rock that pelvis forward like we talked about in the first exercise. So the first step is lock this forward as much as you can with your bottom arm, top leg. Then grab this, hold on to the top leg, and then pull this leg back. And then if you want more out of it, you can actually drop your head and rotate away and then just breathe it in range. And so from another angle here, let's go, why don't I go like this? So you can see top, top leg, bottom arm locks this down, and then top arm, bottom leg, pulls this back, 
Then you let your head fall. And if you can, rotate. And then it's really important that you breathe at that end range. Because if you can't breathe in a position, there's no way your body's going to retain that position. So find a range that you can actually take long, deep breaths in and get rib expansion. And with both of those stretches, it's super important that you don't compromise the pelvic position because that's really where most people make the mistake and um, compensate essentially. And that's one of the reasons people often don't get much out of their hip flexor stretches because they're missing that piece. So those are the two flexibility stretch exercises. I'm going to give you some dynamic exercises that will help reinforce that. I'm going to give you two, and they're both important for different reasons. The first one, you're going to start in a quadruped position. So hands and knees, tabletop position. Anytime I give a, um, a weight-bearing exercise through the arms, I'm going to want you to have fingers spread and elbows straight, most likely. So every time we're weight bearing through the arms, fingers spread and elbows straight. And what that does is it cues the brain. It gives more input into the brain, into where my core and my trunk are in space. So quadruped position, shoulders stacked over wrist, knees under hips. Fingers spread, elbows straight, just like that. Elbow pits rolled forward. These are your elbow pits, in case you didn't know. And then in this one, what you're going to do is push the floor away with those uh, spread fingers like we talked about. And then you're just going to slide one knee up towards your elbow. And if you can keep it going without raising the hand, then you're going to get that leg all the way flat. If you can't, if you find yourself when you go to slide it that you end up like doing this, then you have to regress out of the move. I only want you to move as far as you can without lifting the hand. And the reason that is, I'm going to show you on the other side, knee, and if you can, slide it all the way just next to the hand. The reason that's important is in order for a muscle to maintain its flexibility and to avoid compensation strategies or compensation, we have to have a stable core. So the hip must move on a stable base. If you are lifting your hand like this to get your leg up or on the other side, either one, if you're doing that, then you're basically still using a compensation strategy, which means you're not going to allow that muscle to shorten in the hip socket the way you need to. So this, for this one, it's very important that you are okay with where you are in terms of if you can only go this far without lifting that hand, that's where you are and you're going to be okay with that. And you just keep working it. Keep those hands flat. Keep the shoulders pushing away and slide that knee to the elbow and then foot right next to the hand if you can get it there. But again, don't sacrifice lifting that arm. But what this will do is it'll teach your hip flexors to work on a stable base. So that's one of my favorite mobility exercises to encourage retention of range of motion gains in the hip. The second one I'm gonna give you is different in the sense that we're now gonna use that hip flexor in its end range. We're going to allow, we're actually going to use the glutes, but we're going to take the hip flexor to its end range and work the glutes there. So now we're training the brain a little differently. For this one, what you're going to do is you're going to be on your back like this. You're going to pull one knee to your chest. That's going to, remember, stabilize the pelvis again. And then from there, you're going to hold this knee as close to the chest as you can, and you're going to bridge the butt up. Like I said, you're going to want, most people feel like farther is better. So you might end up kind of going lame here and like doing that and trying to get further here. But the cost of that is that you're now not going to stretch the hip flexor functionally in that position. So instead, really lock down this knee and then drive up as far as you can. And you might even feel a stretch while you're doing this. So just go up as far as you can and then down making sure you're keeping that knee to your chest the whole time. Like I said, they're uh, different. They're, they're dynamic stretches. And the way the second one works is that we are taking that hip flexor to end range, asking the glutes to fire there, which is going to help you retain those, ga those gains. Um, so very deliberate. It's a very deliberate sequence of four exercises. Like I said, for the first two stretching exercises, don't feel like you have to do both of them. Do whichever one feels good to you, feels comfortable for you. And then, but the two dynamic 
exercises, mobility exercises, the quadruped and the, um, the knee lock bridge, single leg bridge, those are very important for retention of the gain. So I would suggest you do both of those. Looking forward to hearing your comments. These are really helpful for a lot of my patients. So um, if you try them, I hope you find they're helpful too. And as always, reach out if you have any questions or comments or you'd like to hear more. Talk soon.